Hey friends, so this video is absolutely by popular request. Everybody wanted me to make a video on how to get a good guitar sound using only Ableton devices, uh, which is a fun little challenge and absolutely achievable. Uh, I don't really know where to start other than just to say that all of the racks that you're going to see here are available to download and I'll put the link down at the bottom in case you want to have a bunch of different guitar racks to uh, use right off the bat. Um, and then further on in the lesson, we're gonna show you how to roll your own, essentially how to make your own guitar effects uh, using kind of the method that I have laid out here. All right, so let's first of all listen to the clean tone, okay? The clean tone meaning I'm plugging directly into my interface in the instrument input. So when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that when you plug in your guitar, that you're plugging into an instrument input, okay? There's usually a little switch on your interfaces that will switch between a line level input and an instrument level input. All this does is change the impedance so that there's more level when you're plugging in uh, uh, an instrument. So I'm using my super awesome and amazingly trusty and incredible Relish Jane guitar. This thing is unbelievable. Um, but I'm basically just using it with uh, some humbuckers and it has a coil tap so I can get kind of uh, single coil sounds, okay? So we can kind of have all the different stuff. So anyway, enough talking. This is what my clean tone sounds like. <laughs> This is the first tone, this is the rock tone, okay? Right, and let's just maybe break down like what, what's going on here. So this is a rack, okay? Uh, when you combine a bunch of effects together and you save it, you can call this a rack, okay? And a rack is just a collection, in this case, a collection of effects. So yeah, let's break this tone down a little bit. There's a pedal, which is kind of a newer effect of Ableton. There's an amp, and then there's an effect rack with two different cabinet effects on here, okay? And then finally we go into a compressor. So essentially, when you load up a brand new amp with Ableton, Nine times out of 10, if you don't know what you're talking about and you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna be like, why on earth would anybody use this, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We would load up a new audio track. Uh, I'm gonna turn it on auto so I can hear my guitar. And when I load up an amp, we get this sound. <laughs> Sorry about that, this is so bad. So yeah, if I maybe I turn up the gain, turn down the volume. So what you need to understand is that all of these guitar effects rely on each other to achieve a good guitar tone. A good guitar tone is is almost like a boot camp level training in gain staging, okay? So amp in terms of trying to get a you know what you would consider a classically good guitar tone is not going to work in and of itself. It has a companion effect called cabinet, okay? So when I grab cabinet and drag it down here, we instantly get a different sound, right? <laughs> Now without cabinet, we get. Okay, so so I hope you can kind of start to understand what I'm what I'm going for here. So what is cabinet? A cabinet is essentially a filter, and it's a filter designed to try to sound like these different speaker cabinets. Okay, and then there's also these microphone configurations. You can do near on axis, meaning right on the speaker, and then near off axis, meaning that this that the microphone is going to be slightly off the center, but still pointed at the center, and then far away from the amp. Okay. So this is what will create a natural sound. And then, so when we go back to look at this rock tone, okay, you can see that I not only have one cabinet effect, but I have two, okay? There's a single, single 12 speaker with a dynamic microphone, and then a 212 speaker cabinet with a condenser microphone on it, okay? Now, if you listen to what this sounds like with just one, that's the kind of sound you get. When you add this other microphone and you get, See how much more natural that sounds? Let's try to listen to it with just a big chord. So when you think of designing a really ideal guitar sound, what you have to think of is that there is a whole series of things that are occurring before the amp and after the amp that create a natural tone. When you have a guitarist with an entire rig, usually that rig consists of a pedal board, an amp, and a cabinet that's being fed into the amp and a microphone that's picking up the cabinet. That is the sum of its parts. And then at the end here, I have this just nice little, I chose the, just to use the lead solo 
uh, glue compressor setting. It's a pretty good setting, on, honestly, on its own. And it, you know, just kind of levels out the, the sound. Now, you might be looking at this amp and saying, well, Anthony, you're on clean tone, <laughs> right? Why would you want the clean amp if you're looking for a rock tone, which is what this, this setting is? Well, that's where pedal comes into play. Without pedal, we get... And then what we're using this pedal as is the pedal has three different settings. We have an overdrive, a distortion, and a fuzz, okay? And on the overdrive mode, it kind of gives you that classic tube screamer overdrive. And then in order to get more of a tube screamer kind of sound, I turned up the mid-range. And this mid-frequency, you can bump it at different levels, right? So this is like a low mid, kind of thuddier sound. And then this is like a kind of vanilla setting. And this is your kind of brighter sound, right? So I have it right in the middle there. Now what this pedal is doing is it's distorting pre the amp, okay? The distortion, okay, the distortion tone is made by the pedal, and the amp is just simply providing kind of like a container for the, the tone, right? And then the effect rack, we are using this to kind of filter that bright, so <laughs> here's what it sounds like without. Ooh, yeah. The, the, again, remember, amp and cabinet always have to go together, okay? So, now with those concepts kind of like, like kind of rooted in, let's go ahead and look at treble booster. So this is, Another way to think of making a guitar chain is that this is sort of like gain staging boot camp, okay? Let's go ahead and listen without pedal, all right? So, so what this amp kind of sounds like to me is like a Fender Bassman, right? You know, it's got that kind of like thuddy, like low end that's kind of growly and... And it kind of sucks, right? <laughs> well, back in the day in the first, the early tube amps, in order to get rock and roll tones out of these early amps with, uh, you know, tube distortions that you couldn't crank the, the volume up enough to get it to break up, right? So what they invented was this thing called a treble booster, right? Which is essentially a pedal that boosts your gain, okay? So there's a lot of gain coming out of it, and it boosts kind of the top end of your guitar. So you get kind of like more distortion tones, right? So now we got... And here's without it. Right, so this is more of like a treble booster sound. Now, if I turn the amp off, <laughs> I'm sorry about this already, but see how much more gain it has without and this without it. So here's the concept. This is where this is just a little bit of technical knowledge. Now, this is a lot of gain. I'm turning this up almost 9 dB coming into this amp, but listen to the amp. If I turn this output down, the amp is almost the same level. Okay. What's happening is we're clipping the input stage of this amp. As I turn this output up, the amp doesn't necessarily get louder, okay? It just has more gain, all right? This is gain staging. This is exactly, <laughs> this is a great way to show what gain staging can do, okay? So with a setting like this, you kind of get like a vintage tone, right? So this is kind of like a <laughs> the Jimmy Page setting, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's kind of that sound, right? And, and, and this is a really great way. Using Boost, Boost is a great amp to do this. Now, other amps, like Clean, aren't going to have the same result, all right? So as you can see down here, I don't know if I explained this yet, but this is, these are all the different amp styles. These are different amps, if you will. And each one of them has a kind of a different uh, way of handling the input gain. So if I switch to Clean, you can hear that if I turn the, the output up, we're going to get more gain as I turn it up, right? See how it gets louder? But if I turn it on boost, we just get more distortion, okay? So the boost is a great amp. I really enjoy the boost one because you can you can use uh, gain staging to get different amounts of breakup in the amp, and man, does it sound amazing. I love it. <laughs> right? Okay, so anyway, let's move on to a clean tone. So. So let's talk a bit about a clean tone. So when I when I say clean, I put it in parentheses for a reason. Let's listen to this without. This is with no processing. This is just my raw guitar signal. And now this is my clean amp. So you might be saying, Anthony, hey, that's not clean, man. Like, that's actually kind of distorted. And you're right. And maybe let's unpack that a little bit. So if I play lightly... versus if I play heavily. You can hear that I have, I have control over how much distortion is in the signal. 
any hit record that's got a clean guitar amp isn't clean. That's that's totally untrue. What it is, it's filtered through all kinds of stuff. You probably have a pedal board. You have gain staging going into an amp. You might have some effects loop. You have you know different microphones on different uh, cabinets and stuff like that, compressors and things like that. To create a clean tone that's really... I think the best clean tones do this kind of thing. You have a... If you play lightly, you have hardly any distortion at all. And if you play heavily... The player has control over the tone, depending upon how they play, okay? And this is a great kind of amp to feed effects into. A little bit of distortion can help a guitar stand out in the mix, but you'll never know that it has distortion on it, okay? This is, that's also why this is kind of a funny video, because, you know, I can show you all these different, you know, uh, presets all day, but, you know, how it blends with the mix is going to be completely different. If you heard a, a, a guitar in a hit record, soloed by itself you might think whoa that's kind of weird and why is the eq like that well that's because they dialed in the amp to try to fit the song okay so when you're thinking about mixing a guitar rarely rarely is a guitar ever going to sit in a mix just right without a little bit of saturation a little bit of gain a little bit of something so you know i hope you got a little bit out of this because a clean tone doesn't necessarily mean totally clean now, let's talk about another way to blend a guitar. Now, up until this point, I haven't used any reverb, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my, st <laughs> I made a studio guitar reverb uh, preset here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. I'll, I'll put this in the in the little pack for you later if you wanna use this too, but essentially this is. So in context of trying to figure out how we can make a more realistic guitar sound, reverb's gonna play a big role, okay? You never hear a sound in dead silent space, okay? You always hear something, some manner of the room. Okay, so usually when, you know, another thing is if you pull up an amp by itself and play through it and you don't have any reverb on it, it's not going to sound natural, right? So what this is basically simulating is a relatively large studio room that you might record a guitar in, right? So this is like a studio guitar room, okay? So... Right, and without it... So this is just going to add a, a level of realism, okay, to your guitar tone, all right? So I'm just going to leave that on for the rest of the video. Let's move on to a Big Fuzz. This is going to be hilarious. Tame Impala for you. So yeah, uh, this is a hilariously super over the top uh, version of using the fuzz on the fuzz pedal. Okay, and I'm going into the rock amp and I've got the mid range turned all the way up. This is going to give you that really like hovery kind of woofy, wooly kind of sound, you know, and that's what I think of. Whenever I think of fuzz, I think of wooly. Uh, some people think of like broken amp kind of sound. I think it's more descriptive to think of it as a kind of like a big hairy wooly sound, right? And yeah, it's ridiculous, but that's why one of the most popular uh, fuzz pedals is called the Big Muff Pie. So you get that kind of like fluffy, wooly kind of sound, right? So uh, in this <laughs> in this case, uh, I've got the gain turned almost all the way up and the, the, out the output turned almost all the way down, as you can see. And I've got a little bit of mid-range in there. And yeah, the mid-range is turned up right here and you get this big, huge... <laughs> way over the top, right? Now you might also be hearing, hey Anthony, I hear like something in stereo. Well, yeah, I wanted to show you something else. Um, I'll go ahead and turn the pedal off for just a second so we get less of that noise. But in this case, you can hear that the amp is kind of in stereo. I'm, I'm, I'll even turn off the, the reverb just so we can hear this. And you're right, there's a little more treble on the right speaker and a little bit less on the left. And that's because what I've done is I've also tried something else. I've taken my uh, two cabinets and I've actually panned them left and right. So this is a great way to get some stereo imaging out of your guitar. You could really go ham on this, make them pretty wide and get a... You know, and then, you know, if these are effect racks, so you could also just grab like an EQ8 if you wanted more brightness on the uh, left speaker, you could just kind of, you know, pull this up a bit. 
And listen to that. We've got a really awesome wide sound and then with this fuzz. <laughs> I love fuzz. Fuzz is awesome. So, as if you can't tell, I absolutely love fuzz. It's so unique. It's so distinct. It has a totally awesome character. And honestly, this emulation isn't bad. Now, I want to show you something else. If you turn on fuzz, and you right-click on this top menu, you can go to high quality, okay? Now, what this will do is I think it'll do some, some sort of oversampling to try to get more resolution, especially in the mid-range, out of the whatever effect you're using, whether it be overdrive, distortion, or fuzz. So now we get... So some of you might hear the difference, some of you might not, no big deal, okay? So... Oh yeah. Do a little drop D action. Let's go to the, the metal <laughs> the metal setting. And real quick, uh, update about my Ableton online courses. I am pretty much in the beta stage now of the composition course and I'm starting to flesh out the mixing course. So we're getting really close people. If you're into the idea of learning Ableton from A to Z with me, um, I'm assembling these paid courses and they're gonna be incredible. Again, you can learn anything that you want to learn about Ableton just off of YouTube alone. But if you enjoy my teaching style and you want to do this quickly and efficiently, my lessons are going to be thorough, optimized, and organized to get you to the next level very quickly. Okay, so if you're interested in learning more about that, I've also included a link so you can sign up to be notified when those courses are ready. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> So yeah, if you're not a Tool fan, get out. So in order to make a metal sound, the most classic thing about a metal sound is high gain and scooped mids, okay? Now, you'll notice that, well, Anthony, you've got the bass more scooped than the mids. So that's where understanding what these different amps do is so important. This lead amp already has a scooped mid kind of sound. If I were to switch this to rock, right? That doesn't really work for me, right? Listen to lead. The cool thing about the lead one is that it's got really tight lows, so you can get um, great palm muting kind of sounds. You know. You feel me? And then, you know, you might say, well, why wouldn't you use heavy for heavy music? Well, I don't know. I kind of feel like I like the way that lead kind of bites a little bit more. You know, you'll, you'll notice that there are sort of some of these amps that I kind of skip over. And, you know, I think that lead just does a better job. It sounds like it has more mid-range resolution. It sounds like it just is going to sit in a mix a lot easier, right? Awesome. Okay. Okay, so moving on, let's look at this spanky compressor tone. Okay, so now we got... understanding a compressor as sort of like a pedal effect is absolutely different than using a compressor to smooth out the uh, a guitar track, right? This, this lead solo setting, this is more for just kind of smoothing out the volumes. But this compressor is set on some pretty extreme settings. And if you get, and if you get something to the order of like a Ross compressor or something like that, these are almost limiter circuits, right? That have a really slow attack. And what that allows to, to happen is you get a lot of spanky kind of sounds. So this... Right, you hear that? So listen without it. So what the compressor does is it um, it can't react fast enough to push the gain down when it hits the threshold, and what that results in is a little bit of a spike in the audio right at the beginning, which is basically attack. It's adding kind of like a little clicky 
uh, transient at the beginning of what you're playing, so you get that. Let's try a different setting. And you might also be looking at the pedal and being like, dude, you got, you got the, pe why, you, why are you using a pedal? This is a spanky clean tone, right? Well, what the pedal is providing me is a little bit of an extra tone palette in terms of my gain staging. If I just played with a clean amp, listen. Now with the pedal. Do you see how the pedal, it's sort of in, you know, I've, I'm subtracting a little bit of what's coming into the amp so the amp can treat my signal a little bit differently, right? I've got sort of basically what would be a kind of different style of treble booster going into the clean amp, okay? Uh, just remember, again, it's so important to think about how one effect is affecting the next effect is affecting the next effect and so on and so forth. The sum of its parts is how you get the tones, right? Okay, so moving on, uh, somebody had asked me, hey, how can I make a bass tone with a guitar in real time? Well, the... <laughs> Now, there are lots of effects available to you um, in terms of plugins that can do this much better than uh, kind of the stock Ableton plugins can do. But I found that you can actually use grain delay. And if you set it on negative 12, okay, and then you play around with spray and frequency. And you also want to turn your time, instead of sync, you want to turn it to as low as it'll go. So one millisecond, that's about as fast as it's going to be, all right? And then if you if you mess around with spray and frequency, I put them on this XY controller so we can just try different settings. But you can get kind of an, an octave down effect, right? <laughs> no, it's not going to be good. But what's cool about it is you can blend it with your original signal and get some really awesome uh, sounds, right? So, here's without it. With it. Right? Kind of like a, like a boss octaver, right? Now, what I found that I really did enjoy, however, is the uh, really crappy, badly executed octave up sound that grain delay can make, and you get that perfect Radiohead sound with it. <laughs> right? It's like almost exactly right. It's just so cool. So these will also be included in that little kit. Okay, so you really, hopefully, hopefully, you're really gonna enjoy this next part. This is a pedal board that I've designed using Ableton effects to make different standard pedals, okay? So let's go ahead and look at what's going on uh, in the back end. And then in the back end, we've got a clean amp, okay? And we've got just two cabinets and that classic uh, lead solo preset on the glue compressor. And it sounds like... And remember, just like a good clean tone, if I play it real hard, I can get a little bit of breakup, right? Okay, so let's look at some of these effects. Let's start with the pedal compressor. So now we've got that classic. Right, you get that kind of clickety, clickety kind of sound. Now here's an interesting one. This is a two-pole phaser, okay? Kind of like your classic MXR phaser. Right? Now, this this took a little bit of tweaking in order to get it to be within the range of a guitar. This this color thing can really help. So check it out. When I have this up high, listen. See how it kind of goes over the top of the range of the guitar? The guitar is a mid-range instrument, so you actually need to pull the color down. You can also get some cool tones when you use the space. Now, when you use phaser right, I think phaser is actually a really well-designed effect in Ableton, and it's really, really awesome. Okay, so I also have a tube screamer, okay? Now, this is just a classic, you know, maybe a setting that a tube screamer would sound like. You've got that that low, what is that, probably like 800 hertz boost in the mid-range, a uh, decent amount of gain, a little bit of output left, and you get... Now, what is so important to understand about guitar is that on a pedal board, the order of your effects really change everything, okay? A really awesome sound that you've probably heard a lot is a pedal phaser before a distortion. I like to think of this as kind of like the 90s lead tone, right?
Now listen to what happens when I take the phaser and I put it after the tube screamer. You hear what I'm talking about? I'll do it slower. <laughs> now, see, to me, that doesn't sound as pleasing, right? I mean, maybe it kind of sounds like, you know, like a ween effect. I feel like they purposefully, like, put, you know, guitar effects and used crappy guitar effects to try to get that hilarious sound that they get. But really, you know, like, like to me, a pedal, a pedal phaser sounds really great before your distortions because you can kind of control those resonant peaks, right? The, the distortion is acting like a filter. Okay, so, and I also have a tremolo. And the way that I did this is I use an auto pan, right? If I have it set on 180, it's not going to do much. And the reason that it's not going to do much is because we're listening in mono, okay? So what we have to do is we have to phase the auto pan to be totally in phase with itself so that it will duck the volume here and there. And now we get this nice... And now I have an amount knob so I can get a really big... Or a kind of like more subtle... Right? Now, used in conjunction with a phaser on space mode, you get a classic Boards of Canada. <laughs> Feel me? Cool. So then, like, let's go to the 80s. We've got a classic pedal chorus kind of sound. So that's kind of like, you know, your classic, like, ballad, 80s ballad. All right. Then we've got an analog delay, kind of classic. We'll put that on with a tube screamer and get kind of a... The way I designed this effect was I used Ableton's new echo effect, which is just so great. And the cool thing about it is that you can, you can filter out the lows and highs of the uh, echo and you can get kind of like a more old school sound, right? So, you know, analog delay is great for those like David Gilmore style, like lead tones. The It's got that kind of like, you know, old school kind of really vintage-y kind of sound. Yeah. So I'm going to turn that off. And let's go look at the beginning of this. Um, so again, effect order is so important. Let's check out this envelope follower, right? Now, if I play this envelope follower with no other effect on, we're going to get kind of a spanky. Here, I'll, ooh, it, gets, it just gets in your ear, right? So yeah, when I turn on this compressor, though... There's a little bit less of that, you know, that resonant peak isn't going to just kind of get super loud and, and, and obnoxious, right? Now, if I use it con in conjunction with a distortion, the same effect is achieved just in a different way, right? See what I mean? And maybe together. See how much more uh, controllable that is? Okay, so we'll turn that off. And then I have an auto wah, which is, you know, basically the same thing. But what I did is I used the, um, I use a different filter mode to kind of get more of a different voicing for this. And I put it on 12 instead of 24, which is more common with wah pedals. So now we have. Let's listen to that clean. Now, another cool thing you can do is you can turn off this, um, this amount for the LFO and you can kind of, you can plug in a MIDI controller and kind of control your own wall if you want. <laughs> Feel me? So yeah. So now we're going to roll our own guitar tone. I'm going to grab an amp. I'm going to grab a cabinet. Okay. These are companion effects. They go together. As far as I'm concerned, there's no reason, unless you're going to use a pretty uh, uh, drastic EQ8, I really think cabinet and amp just go together. It's just how it works. All right. So let's choose... We'll choose the blues amp, sure, that sounds... Blues is kind of like a... It's kind of like a great betweener for pretty much any tone, right? Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of hone in on maybe the sound I want. 
cabinet instantly comes with the comp condenser settings. I'm going to set this on dynamic. Now, right off the bat, this is a bit bassy, but instead of turning the bass down that much on the amp, I'm actually going to grab a pedal, okay? So we're going to grab pedal, and right off the bat, we get more of a mid-range tone because we have it on the overdrive mode, right? And I'm going to turn the treble up a bit and the output down a bit. So now we've got kind of a great tone to start with. But it's a bit honky, right? It sounds honky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go to group. All right. And now when I click on this middle thing to show the show or hide the chain list, I can actually duplicate this. Boom. Now we've got two cabinets. Now remember, if we're doubling the signal chain, we're also going to what? Double the volume. So I got to turn this down. Let's turn these down 7 dB each. And we should have relatively the same tone as we had before. So now we get. But now I can look at. I can, I'll just mute the first one, and let's go ahead and try to work on this second tone. Let's use a, a condenser microphone, okay? And let's maybe make it off-axis. Actually sounds pretty good. Let's try far. And maybe let's try a different speaker. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I wanted to have kind of a more scoopy sound. Now what will happen is, is that if I turn both of these on at the same time, let's listen to the first one by itself. There's more of that honky kind of sound, right? So I'm going to turn this all the way down, and I'm going to sneak it back in until I get kind of a balanced tone, right? So without it, and with it, we get more of like a, this is, a, this is kind of that wooly effect, right? We can try different combinations, right? It's actually kind of nice there. But I think my favorite is the far. And remember, add a little bit of room reverb. And yeah, once you feel like you've started to hone in on what a good tone is, the way to really be sure if it's a good tone or not is to give it the yellow lead better test. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed putting it together. Again, all of these amp racks are available as well as the reverb and as well as the you know guitar pedal board. All that is available in the link below. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. Have a good one.